Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I want to do a bit more work on my 20,000 Bricks Under the Sea cabinet. Uh, we're still only on the second of four levels, so <laughs> I figure we better make some more progress. So I spent last week uh, doing some more designs so I could complete a little bit more of this corner over here. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping to get this entire corner done today. Well, up to a certain level anyway. Uh, it will continue right up to mirror the pattern on the backdrop uh, and we'll get the entire station back in as well because that is currently in bits uh, around uh, <laughs> the bottom shelf uh, after the incident. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> but before we get to that, uh, first of all, you'll have noticed a bit of a new addition. And I'm kind of trying it out in my own mind because I was sorting out some of my uh, undersea pieces into the great big tote that has them all in. Uh, and on the top was my collection of all these six prong propeller pieces that I've been collecting over the many, many brick calls. And wow, there's quite a lot, isn't there? There's actually 28 there, the majority being green, uh, but then with the yellow, pink, dark pink uh, and red on the top. I thought uh, I'd see what it looked like all as one great big stack. Uh, and if you vary the angle that they're connected by, uh, then you can get this lovely sort of wave as if the currents are moving the whole thing. Uh, and because it was so nice, I mean, I could use this as a big plant in my uh, next level, which will be mainly all the bright corals and so on. But I kind of thought maybe this would be a really big feature plant to have on this level. So before I get to my moments, you'll have to tell me uh, what you think of this and what you think of this on this level as well, really. So I'll just pan back a little bit. I mean, it doesn't sort of, uh, you know, dominate this scene. It does get a bit in the way of that wreck. I could move it slightly to the right, but uh, yeah, I mean, things are going to move around in this cabinet. It's not like that will be its final place forever. Uh, I mean, I think our seabed, uh, oh golly, what was it? Seabed scorch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be moving in due course, maybe even to another level. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, anyway, let me know about that. Uh, then on to the amendments, which were largely about our new crab scene, uh, who's ripping apart this great big crab pot that is one of the ones being oh, put under the surface by these crab fishermen. So it's kind of nature versus man. <laughs> And uh, I got lots of really good ideas for this. One is going to be really hard to show you, but do you see it there? Well, the bit of string that is vertically up in the air attached to the uh, pot. That is the other end of the broken string that we did last time that goes all the way up to the buoy on the surface. Uh, and it's just standing up on its own. It didn't need sort of super glue or something like that to make it rigid. Uh, yeah, it will flop down if you're not careful, but... Uh, yeah, that is just to represent that. So that was a really good idea. Uh, I added more crabs. Uh, I found a few lying around. Uh, indeed, I put one onto the bigger crab where it just sort of been shaken out. So I thought that was a really good idea as well. And I actually borrowed one from here, our crab that's stolen the hammer. Changed that to a red one. Uh, so we didn't have different colored crabs as bycatch. I also didn't have a lobster for bycatch, unfortunately. Uh, so that is our new scene with a red crab stealing the hammer and all the uh, bright yellowish orange ones getting released from this. Uh, so yeah, more crabs as well. Uh, and then another really good one was just to reverse the kind of teeth on the inside of the crab claws. Now normally that would prevent the claws from closing, which is why they're kind of a decoration on the outside. Uh, but you can see it on the uh, back claw as well there in the gap. Uh, but since the claws were both open and we aren't going to need to close them in this scene, uh, I've reversed them and I thought that was quite a good idea actually. Uh, and it does look a lot better, like they're a very sort of serrated edge. Uh, and then talking of making it more fearsome, uh, the last one is just adding these claw pieces rather than the sort of grabber pieces that were in the original build. Uh, and he looks a lot more crab-like now, doesn't he? A lot more menacing as well. Yeah, a lot more spiky. So I liked all of those. So if that was one of yours, here is your bedoying. And I'm sure that you'll come up with some amazing suggestions for today's build as well. Okay, here is the whole biscuit, as I call it, on my desk, which is basically the section from just past the sharks all the way to the far corner. 
uh, and it's getting even harder to move now, as you might imagine. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is probably keep this on my desk today with however far we get until it's completely finished, then put it back in for the very last time. Oops, sorry. Uh, and then put the base in because it's already collapsed onto my floor once. So I don't want to do that uh, again either, <laughs> particularly. Uh, and then it will never come out again. Well, not for a long, long time anyway. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty good. I've also removed the plant that would be on here that I'm really happy with actually. <laughs> uh, that one made out of those propeller pieces. Uh, that's part number 30078, just in case you're interested. And, uh, you know, after all those hauls, I was thinking maybe I'd bought too many of them. I kept buying them in sort of ones and twos whenever I saw them. And <laughs> I got the impression that all of you would be thinking, I bet he never uses them. <laughs> I bet he's just going to keep them and they'll never go anywhere. But it turned out that even buying the ones with the crazy colours worked, well, rather well, if you ask me. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that indeed. Though I am mildly suspicious that I've got some more somewhere else that I've kind of forgotten about. So maybe there'll be even more than uh, one of those spikes, uh, another one somewhere else. So anyway... Uh, good. Uh, now I do have one more Bedoin to give out, which is a bit premature, but I like the idea and I did want to mention it to make sure that people knew that uh, I had heard it and was going to do it. And it was about putting magnets into the biscuit, uh, basically the very underside of the biscuit. So then I could attach something in the level below, kind of to the underside of the glass uh, held up by this one. So I could have a great big beastie or maybe a big submarine held up. Uh, by being stuck to the, well, roof, so to speak. So what I've designed, essentially, I've put to one side in this bag, uh, and it's just a few of these 8 by 8 grill pieces, this uh, sort of piece, uh, to replace some of the base plates that are underneath here, uh, and then with a combination of other plates, kind of sandwich in, and you can see there, two rare earth magnets. Now, the thing is, I've got quite a few of these, I could even make sort of four in, in close proximity or something like that, or use these to make absolutely uh, loads, a whole grid of them if I wanted to. And I've used these because they've got this smooth bit here so they can kind of just be sandwiched in and held in place because otherwise they'll all attract each other <laughs> very strongly. Um, but I don't know exactly where I want them yet because I don't know what I'm going to be putting on the underside of this whole level. Will it be a submarine? Will it be a beastie? Do I want it to the left or right? Whatever. I don't know yet. Uh, how many of these do I need? How strong does it need to be? So I figure what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, when I get to that stage is basically rip up a whole section of this with all the stuff on it temporarily removed to kind of put the magnets in and then rebuild it exactly as I had it uh, so I can move on. And that is going to be an absolute pain. And part of me is tempted just to <laughs> take a punt and decide uh, just on one location to put these in. But I think I am going to wait. But it's a brilliant idea. So it definitely deserves a bedoying. Cool. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's to one side. So what about today? Well, we got up to here, as you can see, with this perilously uh, hanging bit of uh, corner burp. Uh, last time we did the rock face and what I'm going to do is kind of continue diagonally along this jagged edge. Now bearing in mind as well that we've got to take into account the base that's above here. Here are two of its feet. There's basically a third one about here uh, and one right out here as well and that one's going to be a lot higher and be resting on some of the rocks. Uh, so that's going to continue up here. And this dark tan section is going to be another cave, much like the dark tan section that you can barely even tell was dark tan uh, with the mer people in. Uh, and so I'll have a cave here. Uh, now, I was thinking of having more mer people in it, but that's not very uh, diverse, really, not using another idea. It's just using the same one again. And bearing in mind as well that the... Um, moon pool from the underside of our base will be about here and if I have loads of divers milling around here and mer people sort of standing right next to them it's not that believable uh, that they wouldn't have been noticed in my opinion uh, so I figure I'll put something different in that cave and a lot of people have been saying things like oh get a massive giant eel or something like that in so basically what I am going to try and incorporate today is this big beastie uh, now I've only got the front of him uh, and, well, that's all I need, really. So he can be uh, giving the illusion that he's much bigger and going off into the back of the cave. And he is actually the basilisk uh, from the sets uh, 4730, Chamber of Secrets from 2002. 
Uh, now that is the set, of course, where Harry adds the headpiece to the staff of Ra, isn't it, in the subterranean map room to find the exact uh, location of where to dig uh, for the um, yeah for the Death Star plans. That's right, isn't it? So there we go. That is that. Not to be confused with the beastie that's in the trash compactor scene. Yeah, from Harry Potter and the Temple of Doom, of course. Uh, that's a completely different beastie. Anyway, uh, so I thought he could be kind of coming out like that out of this cave. But then I thought, oh my God, he's so big <laughs> that basically he'd almost be eating the divers already and they'd have to be incredibly short-sighted uh, not to notice him. Even worse than not seeing the mer people. Uh, and also, because that whole base is going to be like that... We really won't be able to see him that well. Oops, I've knocked off my turtles. Um, so I figured that that wasn't a good idea for that cave. So I think what I'm going to actually do with that cave is just see how much treasure I can cram in it. I don't think it's going to be that big, but I've got loads of sort of gold tankards and treasure chests that somebody sent in, actually. So thanks again for those uh, onto a brick hall. So that is going to be that cave, which means I need a third cave. So let's shuffle along a little bit more. I reckon we've got space for another cave right on the end here. And I think that one will be the one we can put our basilisk in. And he can be like that. And maybe he's preying on something that's over here. So that is my plan for the lower level. Uh, kind of continuing this all up and then going diagonally back to this corner so it matches our backdrop. Uh, now one mini build I did before uh, was this one with these fish. Uh, that are the fish face character from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with all of the offending sort of uh, modern stuff uh, hacked off. I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate that either today or in this slope at all because I don't want this lovely scene to be obscured by a great big base. So that might go on the floor below. Uh, incidentally, I did try loads of different eyes for this basilisk rather than just these trans yellow things. I used I've got a little bag of eyes. I don't use them, so I seem to accumulate them. Uh, but every single one I tried looked really, really goofy. And even tried all the different colours of uh, trans uh, tiles that I've got. And yeah, yellow was the only one that even looked mildly right. So I think I'm going to have to stick with them. Uh, so for this cave, I think that's where I'm going to start. I want loads and loads of arches all sort of different uh, lengths so we can see as much of this body as possible. So if we kind of start there and, and build arches up getting bigger each time we should be able to peer into his cave and see his lovely uh, patterned body uh, all the way back so that is the plan then i can link up with the other cave and then link up with this rock face uh, and then we can take it from there okay well the easiest way of making a cave is using a burp piece inside out so that's the inside of our cave and i think i'll put that about there so i can fill that up with treasure in a minute uh, then i've continued the rocks round so we can get to the opening of the third cave so i just swiss along to that you'll see that i've clamped very firmly the back part of the basilisk or as i'll call him now our giant conger eel into an arch piece uh, with a technic piece in there all pushed down nice and firmly uh, and then i wanted to use many many more arch pieces to kind of bring out and broaden out that long tunnel of a cave so first of all i'm going to use three regular six wide arches in there then expand that to an eight wide arch so we can kind of see one inside the other then maybe some color variation and a bit of a change in direction uh, and then another one of those yet higher and yet more to the right uh, and then I'll start to use the really big one in here like that and you can see it starts to look very much like a long distance sort of <laughs> kind of bendy tunnel with the body right the way down there now and then I thought I'd bring it in at the bottom as well as at the top at this stage just to kind of encapsulate it with some inverse uh, arch pieces I suppose you'd call them uh, and then some more here and a really normal but small arch on the other side there and I think I have a slight overhang on the top and maybe bring that up a little bit higher with an inverted slope and you can see that looks really quite interesting now with all sorts of stuff going on with all the different colours and the shapes hopefully you can just uh, make that out without my <laughs> shadows of my hands spoiling it and then I'm hoping I'm able to locate our giant conger eel into his position 
proving a bit harder than you might have hoped. And then he can be coming out to attack. Ah, there we go. And I've done it so I can move him and position him a little bit with all those articulated parts because I want to have him slightly up and maybe with his head at a slight angle like he's about to strike. So yeah, I think that looks really good. And hopefully we can still see some of that detail kind of over the sides and round him, uh, especially when it's lit by the cabinet lights, of course, because there will be one light about here. So hopefully that'll work really well and it'll all sort of bounce off him and look really nice. Cool, so I'm gonna continue uh, the top of that and continue it round and bridge this gap over here next. Good, good. Well, we are making progress, but it's slow going. Uh, building like this, I always sort of build up a few pieces and then maybe you have to take them back if I don't like the look of it. Or maybe you think that a burp needs to be just one stud to the left or to the right and then you have to take things apart and redo uh, it. But we are getting there uh, bit by bit. Uh, and I've encapsulated the giant conger eel in his cave. And we've got another one of the feet for the undersea base on top of there. I think there's going to be another one there and there around the moon pool, which will be opening about here. Uh, this is obviously on the rock and it'll be a lot higher, so we'll have much less of a stanchion. So all levels up. I've got a corner burp there. One of the pointed ones on its side facing to our right there. Uh, then on the next section over here, I've got one of the pointed ones here, side on facing to our left, just to give it as much variation as possible. Uh, this big square one next, which I'm just going to continue disguising so it doesn't look like it's a burp with loads of different pieces. Uh, this bit was completely welded in from the time before. I think I mentioned it last time as being probably a problem that I'd have to encounter this week because uh, it's an absolute nightmare trying to get these bricks underneath it uh, because taking all of this apart uh, would be necessary to get this out to even temporarily. So yeah, absolute nightmare. Uh, but I'm going to continue to build this up with an old dark grey pointed one here. And I've got another one of the exact same piece side on in there to kind of continue the trench that we've got in between this spiky bit uh, and the next uh, spiky bit that's going to be up here. And then we'll probably have a third bigger spiky bit. And just looking round at my backdrop, that's roughly the shape of uh, the pattern on the backdrop. So this gap, therefore, is going to be our cave. Uh, and I'm going to use that corner burp inside out here. So that will be there. Now, it's not massive for loads of treasure. I reckon if I look at all these uh, oh, treasure chests, which I've joined together, I might be able to sort of manhandle two in there. So it looks like it's packed and stacked. Yeah, there's my new uh, animation there for packed and stacked. Hey, get it in twice. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to squeeze in, in short. It'd be quite fun if it was overflowing, wouldn't it, like that? Uh, and then I'm going to bring it back in with an arch and an inverted slope. You see, this is where it gets a bit tricky, what I can actually fit in, but I'll wedge it in for now. Uh, and then I'm going to put the same corner book, but the right way around this time, in sort of like that to act as the lid for it and to continue our slope up. Oh, so we're getting there, uh, and then I'm incorporating a lot of these nice little arch pieces. I really like them, just for either holes for little beasties or just a bit of sort of architecture, so to speak, natural architecture. And I might have that coming completely out there, so we've got a bit that something could swim through. Talking of swimming, I've just managed to put in another fish in there uh, and some sea life on these rocks. Kind of doing it as I go this time, though I'll probably come back at the end and cake it even more. But... Oh, right, yeah, you can start to see the shape of this. I've just got to keep on going up, up and away. Well, I'm absolutely surrounded by bags of pieces. I've got little uh, colourful bits for plant life. got bricks uh, that are modified. I've got little toppy slope bits. I've got one by two by two bricks. A bag for absolutely every permutation and combination. Huge bag of cheese wedge pieces. <laughs> Uh, and, well, they're all coming together into uh, a lovely continued undersea bank. Uh, and I'm filling in the wildlife as I go, and I think it's looking really good. This whole encapsulated area with our eel in is really, really nice, and we'll be able to see that uh, quite prominently, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I've put the 
treasure into the cave. There's actually two chests in there, one sort of on its side, <laughs> rammed in a few goblets and a gold bar and so on. So I think that's looking good. Uh, I'm starting to build in a bit of a support structure uh, on the inside of this. I've got some uh, bricks holding up this back corner and I'm just building in a few here to take the next row of burps. Uh, and I think I'm doing quite well at dis uh, disguising them because, uh, well, you can't really see them all in here, can you? Uh, just uh, so you know, these columns of the uh, coral coloured ones are going to be replaced with the uh, yellowish orange when I get them. I've got some in order. It's just uh, they'll be going for a much lower level because they actually fluoresce in UV light. So I'm saving those for there. Uh, so then the next level then, uh, I think we're going to go with one of those about there. Uh, then we can put in one of those about there. Put that little clam back. Uh, then we can put in what? No, I think it's that one there. Very nice. We put one of those in there. This in here. See, I'm starting to use these in all different ways. So that one's side on. Oh, I'll go in there. And then yet another one of these in kind of there, I think. Oh, so that gives us a whole next level to disguise. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to get all the way to the top today just because of the amount of time this is taking. But um, I'm going to try and complete this whole band here. At least we'll have the lower section. Maybe we could even get in the lower section of the base after that. Uh, so all these modified bricks with the one by ones are for more weed pieces, just like we've got on this side. And I was thinking, because I've got a relatively flat area here where this uh, little uh, seahorse is at the moment, uh, I could have a little bit of kind of kelp forest, just cram in as many of these, uh, what would you call these sort of, I think of them as uh, little uh, reeds coming up from a pond almost, uh, put those pieces in, well, absolutely cram it full. Now, I won't get too excited about this section because this is going to be completely blocked by one of those great big yellow submarines that's going to be about here. So yeah, it probably won't get seen, which is why I can go for this sort of relatively drab idea and just do a lot of it. So I might do that there. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll keep on going. So yeah, I'll try and finish this whole area uh, today. And maybe I'll even get onto our small rock, which is kind of in the corner, the front right hand corner as well. And then at least we'll have a whole nother section done. Oh, right. Hard work, but good fun. I mean, good results as well. So I'm quite happy with it. Oh, wow. That looks a lot better with all these weeds in place. Just makes so much difference. And then look at all of these reeds kind of up the side of this, completely disguising that boring flat patch. And... Yeah, it looks really good in quantity, doesn't it? It gets me really excited as well, actually, for the level below when we get to that with all the exciting coral, because, I mean, this is a pretty drab piece, but in quantity, it looks really interesting. So imagine when we've got all the really, really, really bright and interesting pieces in great big clumps like this. But yeah, that'll be pushed up right against the glass. It might even reflect in it. We might even get more for our money, so to speak. Um, we've got the uh, little starfish and... Uh, seahorse hiding in there. I might even try and get a fish in the middle of it or something like that. That would be good. Uh, but yeah, that's disguising the burps even better, isn't it? So I think what I'll do for the next section is probably have uh, another shoal of fish or something like that up here. Uh, but yeah, keep disguising all of this as well. Oh wow, I was right. It looks even better with fish in it, swimming in between all of the things. Oh yes. This is a real look forward to the level below. <laughs> wow, well I think that is a good bit of progress for one session. Uh, it was always going to be more than one go to get this entire sort of second right hand side part of rock finished. And I think I've done more than half of it actually. Uh, there's a little bit of tidying to do in this kind of valley between the two main rock areas. And obviously I need to do the entire top. But I think what I've done represents over half of the whole thing. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, and we've got our nice fish in the kelp. We've got more of the same sort of going up uh, the main frontage bit. Cave number two, cave number three, of course. And I've even put all of the uh, life and plants onto this front right rock, 
which is going to be right at the front of the cabinet. And I thought I'd add just a little bit more life to that uh, in the form of these clicky dolphins who look very happy and like they're having great fun. So I think that'd be a good scene for the front. And uh, I think I'll have a whole pod of them, actually. One, two and three. And they're in a very dynamic pose. So I think that'd be a really nice scene to have at the front. And it occurs to me that this might be the reason why this ugly brute has shown his ugly face, <laughs> because maybe he's thinking, hmm, dolphin for dinner. <laughs> and he's hoping to grab one as they fly past. Uh, and I imagine they're chasing after some fish or maybe playing just some games because that's what they like to do. Why not? Uh, now, I do want to do just a little bit more before I stop today, and that's just to put the very bottom of uh, the undersea base back in, just to sort of... Uh, stanchions linking them together and the kind of ramp pieces uh, that hold all of the submarines on just to prove to myself that I've got the spacing right and if I haven't there might be some bad language <laughs> um, but also to give me kind of inspiration to keep going uh, with this next time because I think that's what I'm going to do I've got all these pieces out so I may as well push on and finish the top section next time even though uh, it's quite hard work and I'm a bit tired to be honest uh, but a break will sort me out no uh, problem so uh, yeah that'll be a good thing to have in position to give me more energy uh, and also to get in the way so uh, I'm knocking it over every two minutes as well <laughs> anyway right I'll get on with that and then we can bring it to a close Ta-da! oh wow I'm really glad I did that final bit just to bring the sort of two halves of the major project together. The bottom of the base seamlessly sort of blending into the uh, rock face. We've got all the pipes and the angles of that and then all the rough hewn edges with all of the sea life and seaweed on behind it. But that just looks absolutely fantastic if you ask me. And it did all work. <laughs> Uh, we've got the uh, divers coming out of the moon pool, one on the back ladder and one on the front ladder in there. Uh, and they must be partially sighted because they still haven't spotted all the treasure in the cave that's right next to where they're actually standing right now. Um, and I've put the red stripes that I started on the top stanchions up here uh, onto the bottom ones as well to tie it all together. That's looking good. I also used more of the two by two round bricks with a hole in the side that I used to mount my turtles in an interesting formation uh, just to add two sangreen fish which I think is what these guys are after for dinner and he's after them for dinner so uh, <laughs> he's still visible and that's uh, really good to see uh, because I think there is one problem which I know a lot of you are not going to like is when you see a scene like this with those fish in the kelp and that little red crab there you think oh that's really nice and then the rest of my base comes along and I plonk a great big submarine on its ramp, uh, attach that and it is all blocked. You really can't see any of it at all. I mean, maybe if we peer around the corner, but I'm not sure that angle is going to be possible. Uh, definitely a little bit from above, maybe in the reflection of the glass, you never know. Uh, but uh, not really under either. So yeah, a bit of a problem. You know, at least I've kept the main part of this uh, eel coming out of the cave very visible. The dolphin's very visible. I don't think our treasure cave is visible at all. Well, you can just about see a glimpse of it through there. So it's a good thing I didn't put anything too interesting in that. Um, but, I mean, part of the way I build Lego and have uh, the interiors of buildings and all the rest, the way I do it, is that there's always loads of detail that's either hard to see or that you really have to sort of crane your neck to have a look at and that does keep it nice and interesting um, but yeah I don't really mind it I know it's there at the very least so yeah mission accomplished basically we haven't finished the project but by bringing these two halves together it's really revitalized my energy levels I've got a bit of a tired back from leaning in all sorts of different angles but uh, with this all together I'm just going to have to push on with <laughs> all the pieces in the bags strewn around the floor around my feet uh, for another session whether I get a brick haul in in between those two is uh, another thing entirely but yeah do tell me what you like what you don't like what you'd like to see more of and what you'd like to see less of 
Uh, tell me if I really need to reconsider that submarine, but I mean, I was going to have two uh, in base. There'll be another one there blocking uh, that whole view as well, to be honest. And maybe I should have them all out at sea, uh, hard at work, and then it'll be a lot easier to see everything else that I've done. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's shaping up. <laughs> So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos, including adding your suggestions for improvements into the comments section to earn yourself a nice shiny badoing. Lovely! Uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, when we do a build, I think we do just have to continue on with this. It would be a crime not to, really. Uh, I'm surrounded by all the bags of pieces still, so I'll probably leave the room in a complete mess <laughs> so I can pick up where I left off. But I'm also hoping to squeeze in a brick haul this week. So uh, yeah, maybe this will still be on my desk. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, until all of that, see you. Nom, 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 dolphin. Num 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 fish. Num 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 plankton? Zooplankton? <laughs>